Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Friday, May the 29th. You know, we're in, uh, we're in spring and summer and many of you out there are sneezing and sniffling with um, pollen in the air. Well, Jack Schultz is with us from Life Science Center University. Good to have you here, Good to see you Jack. Again. You walked in and I said, what do you want to talk about? And he said, well, how the heck is your uh, allergies? Yeah. <laughs> What causes allergies? Uh, allergies are caused by your body thinking or reacting as though some protein in something you ate or smelled uh, is actually a protein that it would find on a bacterium or some enemy. And your immune system gears up to attack that enemy, but it's mistaken because it's not the enemy, it's some foreign protein that it, it mistakes for the enemy. As a result of that, you, your machinery all your machinery kicks in uh, specialized cells go to the site of uh, irritation, loosen up the blood vessels so that the good cells can come out and eat the bacteria, because otherwise they're confined in your blood vessels. So the blood vessels get loosened up, they get leaky, and all that water winds up running out your nose. That's why you have the runny nose, the runny nose, and the runny eyes. Right. So what what what's happening is your body is confused. It's it's right. it's. It, inhaling that pollen mm -hmm. or getting the pollens getting your eyes mm -hmm. or is it the same thing with dander when you're allergic sure. to to something cat yeah mm -hmm. so the body thinks oh, oh mm -hmm. wait this is really dangerous yeah. and we've got to get rid of this yep it's kind of a mystery why the body makes that mistake uh, you have cells that learn what to attack and for some reason uh, as you were growing up or as I was growing up I never grew up, how about you? No, I don't think, young. I'm still a kid. Yeah, so, uh, but as you're growing up, your cells are acquiring information about things they should attack. And in some people, for some reason, some of your defense cells pick up the information that these particular proteins are things they should attack. Uh, allergies are pretty heritable, so there's about, uh, if, you, if you look at identical twins, identical twins are, about twice as likely to have an allergy than twins that are not identical. So it really looks as though there's a genetic component to this. But everybody and his brother is trying to figure out what it is as you're growing up that teaches your defensive cells the wrong lesson. And you can outgrow a particular allergy yeah. too, can't you? Yeah. And at one point your defense yeah. cells say, oh, wait a minute. Oh, we've been doing something wrong here. Let's not worry about yeah. this. Yeah, I don't think anybody understands that either. It could be that they get too busy doing the right thing. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the ideas about this is really an interesting one, and that is that um, some people argue that your defensive cells would be trained better if they were exposed to more things as you were growing up. I was going to ask you that yeah. also because I read a story the other day. Uh, and tell me what you think of this. <laughs> but the children who were kept in, when they were growing up, yeah. were kept in very sterile environments. Yeah, they yeah. were never allowed to really crawl on the floor right. or get out and play with the dogs and cats or right. outside in the yard and get their hand in the, in the right. soil. When they grew older, they were more apt to have sickness than the kids who weren't kept mm -hmm. quite as clean right. as right. kids. Yeah, uh, you know, that's one of those things that's, you know, right now it's a correlation. We're not too sure why it would happen that way. But it seems to have something to do with your defensive cells learning the right signals as you develop uh, and being exposed to more things to learn from. I guess they, they yeah. do a better job. Now, that's not saying that, that you should keep your child filthy. No, no, no. But let your child get out and play in, play in the yeah, dirt sure. and crawl on the floor sure. and pet the dogs and the cats. Yeah. There's another connection that uh, people are coming up with on that, and that is we're, we're learning a greatly increasing number of characteristics of everybody that seem to be influenced by the, the microbes that live in your gut, the ones that are there pretty much all the time. Uh, in your stomach and intestines, you have uh, you know, millions of bacteria of thousands of kinds. And it turns out that uh, they seem to influence a lot of characteristics that you would never guess, and one of them is allergies. Uh, the people are making the case that it could be that people who are susceptible to allergies like pollen and hay fever and so forth, and those that are not, differ as much in what bacteria are living in their guts as what they've been exposed to. Hmm. That brings me to another story that I read, mm -hmm. and correct me if I'm wrong on this, 
but the overuse of antibiotics, mm-hmm. besides allowing germs to, to uh, create super, super germs, mm-hmm. when you use a lot of antibiotics, it kills the bacteria mm-hmm. in your gut. Right and can bring on other problems by killing the good bacteria. Yeah, um, I think we talked about this once before that uh, you have more bacteria cells in your body than you have your own cells. You're more bacteria than you are. Uh, Is that right? Person. I didn't yeah, know about, that. about 10 to one. There are 10 bacterial cells for every one cell in your body. So you and I are largely bacteria. bacteria. Yeah. Right, yeah. And the bacteria is good. <laughs> yeah, most of them you, are good. You yeah. need the bacteria. And you need the bacteria to digest our food. Right, and you need them in a particular balance. If they get if they get out of balance, you know, there are good ones, bad ones, they keep each other sort of in check. So that's why uh, using antibacterial uh, soaps and things can actually have funny effects on your skin because the health of your skin is maintained by a combination of bacteria that are supposed to live there. And if you knock them all out, you don't know what's going to happen next. So it's probably better to just use soap and water. Generally, yeah. And not the antibacterial soap. That's right. There's a really interesting uh, evolutionary side effect here, or possibility. Nobody's ever figured out exactly what the appendix is for. It's a little sort of sac that hangs off your intestine, right? Right. And it's packed with bacteria. Uh, And some investigators are arguing that uh, in case you do lose your gut fauna there's a place from which it can recolonize it can come from the appendix yeah that great idea yeah Yeah, that is yeah because we really don't have very good understanding what it's there for otherwise you know you you are you are fascinating to talk to we were going to just talk about allergies we ended up talking about uh (laughs) three or four different things sure but it's it's really interesting we there is so much that we don't know about our about our body. Yeah, and a lot of it is common sense if, once you figure it out. It's, I mean, it makes perfect sense that if you wipe out the good bacteria, you're gonna be sick, right? Mm-hmm. And also, uh, is it not true that if you're not feeling well and you just leave your body alone, chances are the body's gonna take care of itself? Well, it really depends on what it is. Right, right. Yeah, but I mean, I mean a, there's, a common, there's some things that are gonna, thing. some things will get you if you don't pay attention, right. really. But yeah. the, the common, yeah. like, the, the common problems things. we have, the yeah. body will cure itself. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. Jack Schultz, thank you so much for coming by. Please come back again. Sure, as always, it's okay. a pleasure, Paul. Yeah, we kind of veered off the topic, oh, but I thought it was pretty interesting. It was fun, sure. Yeah. yeah uh, Monday, we've got uh, Cobo Community Action and the Children's Mental Health. Our program directed by Travis McMillan, Reynolds Journalism Institute. Audio is Pat Akers, KBIA. Our floor director, Lowell Thomas, and our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Mauser. Something you'd like to hear or see, drop me an email, pepperp at missouri.edu. Have yourself a good weekend. We'll see you Monday.